I'm Jessica with Gold Rush Expeditions, and today we're exploring the Holy Moses Plains. Now the Holy Moses Claims are actually four claims, so 80 acres, and they consist of three well-known mine tunnels. You have number one, the Holy Moses, number two, the outlet mine, and number three, the carbonate. Now from historical documentation, we absolutely know that the Holy Moses, which is way up there, and the outlet mine, which is way down here, connected. So that just tells you the sheer size of the workings inside these mines. So I'm sitting right here in front of a massive trussel that would have brought all of the waste rock from inside the mine to this waste dump that we're sitting on. Now the waste dumps here are massive. I don't think I've had a mine with this big of waste dumps before and they're still full of minerals. So we're going to explore the site. I'm going to show you around and I'll show you some of those minerals that we've been seeing. I am getting cold air at my back. That tells me that the mine workings inside of here are extensive. That airflow usually means that there is other openings to this mine elsewhere along this mountain that's causing the airflow to circulate in and out of this mine. Now one thing that's pretty interesting about this mine portal, you can see behind me, there's a lot of rock, okay? However, this tunnel goes in this direction and there is a road above it. That road is not collapsed and nothing up the mountainside is collapsed. What that tells me about this outlet tunnel is that this rock right here is the only thing blocking me from getting into those extensive workings. So a common misconception about mines is that the owners of this mine blocked this off and said, ah, there's nothing left in there, so we're just gonna block it off and leave it. That's actually not the case. Most of the times when mines were closed like this one behind me, it's because the original claim owner knew 100% that there was still value in the mine and they wanted to come back and mine it. Now, we've told you a lot that because of the war acts, a lot of these mines were closed down. Well, if I was Joe, the miner, and I knew that my mine still had a lot of mineral value and gold to it, but I had to go off to war, what would I do? Well, personally, I'd block off my mine entrance, go back to war, or go off to war, and then come back after the war and start working my gold again. The miners who started this operation right here were not weekend miners. This was their full-time job, 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And that is what it needs to be again today. It cannot be a weekend mine. It needs to be a full-time, you put in the time, you're gonna get out the money kind of mine. This mine is going to take a lot of money to get up and running. You're probably going to pay a pretty hefty bond. However, once you put the money into it, you will get the money out of it. The great thing about these mines that are up here is that the historical documentation is all over the place. You can find historical documentation on this mine all day long. You can find how big it is, what it was worked for, what years it was worked for, what's left in reserves. The documentation tells us so much about this mine. Now, this mine is not going to be an easy, hey, I'm gonna come out here, pick up some rock and start making some money. It is going to require that you get a plan of operations approved, a prospecting permit. Um, you're gonna to have to build a road. There is a river that you have to cross on a piece of wood right now. It's not gonna be cheap uh, to get the road built over here, but you're gonna need it if you're gonna be removing ore and getting it processed. These are two engines that are currently located on the Moses claim. Now, this one is a flat four, and this one behind me is an eight cylinder. It does not appear these were originally in this location. It looks like they came from somewhere else on the claim site. You can see that they're kind of on sled bases that somebody maybe tried to pull them to take them home, put them in a museum, put them in their house, their front yard. Not really sure. Since they're not in their original position, it kind of makes it impossible to see exactly what they were used for. When they're positioned right in front of an adit or in a hoist house, then you're like, okay, yes, that's what they were used for. But the way that they're set up, there's no way they were used for the adit behind me. If you've ever been to Creed, you've probably heard of the Bachelor Loop. The Bachelor Loop is an entire loop around all of the mines that used to support Creed, the town. So right behind me here is the canyon that leads to Creed. Creed is about three miles. That is it from where I sit. Now, when Creed was first discovered, they thought that everything out here was silver. Silver, silver, silver. Of course, silver would still make you money. However, every single mine out here started pulling out gold. And obviously gold is a lot more valuable than the silver that these mines were originally being worked for. Now when silver crashed in 1893, a lot of these mines shut down. The only mines that actually stayed open and continued to run were the ones that were working gold. The entire town of Creed, Colorado was built around mining. And you can see that by all the remnants of the mines that are out here. Now Creed, 
it's still there today. Some people go up and visit it and a lot of people will come see the Bachelor Loop. Nothing that we've seen in Creed seems to stay in business for very long. Now, why is that? Could it be because the town was built on mining and there is no mining going on out here anymore? That's exactly what we at Gold Rush are trying to do. We are claiming up these epic historic mines around Creed and we're offering them to you to come back out here, bring life back to Creed, bring mining back to Creed. The last thing I want to show you on the Holy Moses claims is this giant ore chute behind me. All the ores from the Holy Moses, the outlet, and the carbonate would have been brought to this ore bin right here. The good ore would have been then slid down into a truck that would have crossed the river and taken the ore down into Creed to be processed. Gold Rush is out here surveying these mines, finding all the historical documentation because every single one of these mines still has minerals left inside. We want somebody to come out here, make these mines great again, and make America great again with mining. To get the ore and process the ore for these claims and to get this mine running again, it's going to be a huge project, but it's going to be well worth it. For historical documentation on this claim, plus all of our survey information from being out here today, visit our website, www.goldrushexpeditions.com. For Gold Rush, I'm Jessica, and we'll see you at the next site.